Welcome everyone to the HWBOT World Series. This is the first match, the first semi-final here at the HWBOT World Tour North America. And I will be queuing in with uh, Christian Ned, that is the judge. He will be uh, doing the uh, benchmark draw for uh, the uh, the overclockers. So Christian, are you on communication? Yeah. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, so I will let you go through the benchmark. Okay, so let's draw. So, first choice is uh, GPU Pi 100M. You're fine with it? Fine with it? Okay, so the benchmark is going to be GPU Pi 100M. This is it, guys. So, they we start in 10, two. 9, 8. Well, wait, Christian. Just have to be sure that we are all sync in here. Okay. Just for a little bit. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. When you, whatever you want, Christian. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay, and we're off then. So I don't know, Mr. Breeze, in fact, Truthman, because I was checking his stats. So he didn't have like that many. Uh, let's say extreme cold results. He was like also in the Apprentice League. So he's like. Really, the new kit then for LM2? Did he bring his own gear or, or pots or, or what was going on? You have any he, he input about that? He brought his own gear, and uh, last year he was already at the HWBOT World Tour 26, uh, 2015, and the uh, it was actually his first time last year using LM2, like like really using LM2. So for him, it's like like kind of like the the outsider in this competition. Uh, Rasper is actually uh, number uh, number two in Canada, so. Um, it's a it's a good cont contending uh, contending guy for for the top league. Indeed, we'll just see because I uh, also checked their scores and and both didn't do that much on 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 Skylake and it's something that we have seen before as well in in, in previous events that that not everybody is like fully prepared for this like they're just seeing what what will happen what board they will be given the CPU and stuff like that and, and then just just try to dial it in so which is like makes it even more challenging I think the 1v1 format is already challenging but if you have like unknown hardware or technology it's it's even more fun of course to do so this is actually quite fast so they have to cool down uh, when they start they have to Make sure that the, the system is uh, is not in a negative uh, temperature. They have to be above zero degrees, and then they can go straight to it. So we will. Uh, Raspberry is already having the first score of the game, uh, 16.193. Yeah, and it's a, it's still a fast benchmark. It's not like 32m. It's like you can compare it like with maybe 2m or, or 4m. So it doesn't take that long. So it's interesting to see some good scores. So the overclockers uh, all use the uh, they all use the uh, Intel Core i7 6700K CPU from Intel, and uh, uh, they use DDR4 memory that we provided them. Uh, they can use any graphic cards they want. Uh, the, the only restriction is they have to use the HDMI output. Um, the benchmark has been chosen that's a GPU Pi. They can uh, use any kind of cooling they want except Cascade. And uh, the the motherboard is all Asus motherboard. So Raspberry is using the uh, Maximus 8 Extreme, uh, Maximus 8 Hero, uh, while um, uh, Doctor Mr. Breeze is actually using the Impact, the Impact uh, motherboard. So the very mini ITX one. Yeah, and it, it, it surprises me, in fact, because the GPU Pi is not that, let's say, super memory dependent, and especially not this, this fast one. So maybe Mr. Breeze is like fair play, because if, if I was in his position, the impact board can normally clock the memory way higher than, than the extreme or, or the hero one. So he didn't take it to advantage for himself so to, to, to have like the, the dual slot uh, memory board and to get just clock memory higher it's, it's really a good sportsmanship that they both agree because usually in all these competitions we saw like a benchmark and then you saw the both contestants like hesitating and mm, what can i do will i veto this one or maybe just wait for the other one and usually we had like the second or the third benchmark draw that will make it and we just add the first score from mr breeze 16.123 this is the first score for him in here and what you will be able to see is everything going on on the screen. Raspberry is actually in the BIOS, uh, going into changing the settings for his core uh, i7-6700K. 
1.6 volts. Ah, oh, come on, you could. Yeah, you have a clearer, <laughs> clearer view on, on, on the frequencies because I can't make it out on my little monitor here. So they're like clocking at, at which frequencies now? They're like 5.5, 5.8-ish? Or where, where are they at at the moment? They, they're just starting at this, uh, uh, at like four, four something. Um, right now we have Mr. Breeze from the blue team. So basically, what the guys add is uh, when they start the um, when they start the competition at first, they have to have the system that is in uh, not cooled down below below zero degrees. And once this is uh, this is done, they have to cool down the CP the the system, make sure it still works because they just have 30 minutes. Huh? It's already five minutes almost. We're in this uh, in this uh, in this game, so we want to make sure that everything is working. They want to make sure that uh, the system is uh, correctly running. But they they always um, say Mr. Breeze had some uh, slight issue and had to uh, to go back to reset the the, the CMOS. Oh, so we have yeah we have now on the screen um, Rasparth will be uh, benching back again. Ouch! So this five thousand two hundred so still very gently dialing in. Did they already like pre-test the CPUs that they got or they just got them this morning? Because I saw yeah. the, let's say your introduction video when you guys were like walking along, along the streets and, and apparently all the contestants said, okay, we'll just take and, and test the hardware the, in the morning and let's just see how it runs. And this is exactly how it went. So yesterday after the qualifier, so after the three hours of the qualifier, we asked them, do you guys want the CPU, memory and OS tonight? Oh, you want them tomorrow? And they says we just want the OS tonight, and uh, tomorrow we just uh, we want to have the the CPU and the memory, so it's fair for everyone to have it at the same time, and uh, and they can all go rest actually. Mm -hmm. So that was like actually uh, not even a discussion. There, there was not even a discussion for for that because they they all wanted to not have everything uh, there, so they just got everything just uh, this morning when we came uh, we came in. So that's been uh, like one hour from now. So it's been one or they have the, the system. So they did some pre-testing, but they could not cool down too much because they have to have the system above zero degrees when we when we started here. When we start here. Okay. okay, we're dropping below the 15 second mark now for Rasparty. So uh, things going really well for him and he's like really clocking up way faster than, than Mr. Breeze at this moment. So uh, he's going for it. So Rasparty is actually at 5.6 gigahertz right now. And uh, they're both benching Ooh, that's the screen for Rasparth. Restarting maybe, cooling down. I can see the the temperature from it. It's, uh, Rasparth is at the like minus uh, negative 64 degrees, and mm -hmm. he's uh, keeping on uh, going down. These are in, indeed again uh, CPUs provided by Intel, Truffman, or are these like uh, the little ones. These are CPU. That you guys... These are CPU from the organization. Ah, okay, so non deleted ones as well. Non deleted, uh, non. Um, they're pretty much equal in terms of uh, frequency they can reach, but they are not uh, not deleted for for this purpose. Mm -hmm. So probably 5.6, 5.8 ish will be the max that we'll be seeing today. Then, depending on on the benchmark, of course. So indeed, it, it's something that you have to take into account. Don't go too cold, too quick. Otherwise, the paste inside will go bonkers, and you will lose the megahertz, and it will be game over. So indeed, they need to. That's what probably one of the reasons that they're just clocking up. A little bit slower than that what we have seen, for example, in France, where all the CPUs were deleted, and where they could go go like full pot. This is not and happening well, uh, today. In France, they had the CPU uh, up front, so they could have test exactly, you know, uh, mm -hmm. what can the CPU can do. So when you know exactly what the CPU can do, it's actually easier to to just go straight for it. This is more like they have to discover the CPU and the memory. Uh, live, so they have like 30 minutes to max out the system as much as they can. It's already like eight minutes we're in this, so it's like one third of the of the complete game is already out. Yeah, and the scores are really getting tighter again. So pretty fun to watch. So 14898 for Rasparty and 515204 for Mr. Breeze. So he had like a almost a 0 0.8 second gap before but closing down to less than 0 0.3. So oh, he's... and both crashed at the both, yeah, both almost crashed. Actually, Raspart crashed. He's at negative uh, 78 degrees. Um, Mr. Breeze is uh, had the system crash. Too bad at the at the third loop 
on the benchmark. So um, GPU Pi, my uh, GPU Pi League of, did you did you use that benchmark a lot? Not a lot, in fact, because I used more the. It can be run in like in, in two different versions. You can run it like in CPU version, like the guys are doing right now, or you can do it on the graphics card. And I've been doing like more on the graphics card because that was like a little bit more challenging to do like uh, this sort of benchmark on. But in, in because it, they chose like the the fast one, it's not that memory dependent. The same compared like with one M or thirty two M Super Pi, and one M it, it depends like a lot of on the raw. CPU frequency and 32M goes more into the combination of raw CPU speed, memory bandwidth, timings, all the stuff together. So, of course, we cannot watch like a nine minute stuff here on a 30 minute run. So, we have to choose quick benchmarks. So, in fact, they have to focus just on clocking up the CPU as high as possible and then maybe max that one out. And then, if time is, if there's still time left, maybe dial in the memory a little bit more. Because for me, the the screen is a little bit too 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 small to see what memory divider or whatever they are on at this moment. I think they're just clocking maybe 3600 ish on the memory, just keeping it safe so that it's still stable and run, and just trying to find the max frequency for this benchmark. Raspberry is running again. The um, so yeah, that's exactly what you say. They they are trying to to find out like. If you go too fast, you have the risk of either uh, too fast on the temperature. You have the risk to crack the, the the thermal paste, and this will be like you will lose definitely. You lose some uh, some momentum in in your in your competition. And if you actually take the the other way around, like going slowly down and making sure that everything is going fine, uh, you can just slowly increase. But no. Like Raspberry started quite fast, and now Mr. Breeze is taking the lead against him by like about, about like 200 milliseconds. So that's gonna be tight for for the competition, especially because Mr. Breeze is the outsider in this competition. And that's also a thing you can tweak this benchmark. In fact, in the benchmark itself, you can uh, set some uh, batch sizes and a reduction size, which you have to find for yourself, which works the best for your OS. Your memory that you're running, your CPU, your the entire platform, in fact. So, And, and maybe Mr. Breeze has found some good combination in, in the batch size and reduction size. I don't know, you see 22M and 64. You can just barely see it, what is going on. You can also see it in the bottom. And we just have to cross-check if Rasparty and Mr. Breeze are running, let's say, the same batch size and reduction size. It doesn't make that much difference, but in the end, you will see, and we're really, really tight now, 16, 6, 14, 6, 47, 14, 680. So there's almost no difference between both competitors. So really fun to watch. And we are 18 minutes left in this competition. And this is super tight. Rasparth just took back the lead from Mr. Breeze by about 37 seconds. It looks really cool. In fact, he looks totally relaxed and, and just watching the setup while Mr. Breeze is like a little bit staring and, and, and why doesn't it post? Uh, what's going on? And, and maybe he went too cold, a little bit too cold, too quick, and now has some, some issues to get it like up and running again. And this is, of course, typical. If you're not fully aware of, of, of the, the CPU and, and, and how everything reacts under cold, you can lose like a lot of time, which is, in fact, your worst enemy in these kind of competitions is just the time limit. It's so tight, there's almost no room for error. If you have to heat it up again, start over from, let's say, minus 30 and then cool down, yeah, you lose so much time. Time which you really need to, to, to find the max here on, on these setups. This is crazy indeed because all these overclockers, uh, as you say, they, they just discovered the, the CPU and the memory this morning. Uh, they know the motherboard because that's uh, either their motherboard or the motherboard they've been using for a while. This, uh, these are the Asus motherboard and um, the, this, the, C, the PSUs as well, the, the Seasonic one, they all know these PSUs, of course. So for them, it's mostly like the CPU and the memory that is quite... Uh, Quite oh, and look at what we have! We have the first blue screen of the competition! <laughs> You're dreaming of those, I think, no, in your sleep? <laughs> blue screens? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually funny because there's the, uh, the feedback from the live <laughs> on the other side of the room as well. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're kind of used to it now. So I think both are like uh, running into slight issues, really looking at the setup 
pressing the reset button, retry button, whatever there is on the Asus boards, they're pushing it right now to get the systems up and running. And this can be like really frustrating because you see that, that it's so close. In fact, okay, Rasparty took like a, a small lead again on, on Mr. Breeze, but you see them both are like looking at the post lads from what is going on. Why doesn't this post? Where is it stuck? Let's go. Seems party is booting again into the BIOS. I think the body language of Mr. Breeze gives away some, uh, some minor issues. Indeed, he's actually uh, struggling to get back the system on uh, on the work. So the two overclockers are both restarting the system, so that's when we switch to this kind of uh, CDLN2 flowing. So we're seeing the, the, the screenshot of Rasparty now. Was that the BIOS of Rasparty? He's trying to do 4000 megahertz on the memory, which would be like really impressive if he can pull that one off if it boots and if it's stable. So Rasparty is still in the lead at the moment. They are both uh, no, waiting for the... Like, Mr. Breeze is struggling to get the system working again. Uh, Rasparty is, is like... Yeah, I did the setup in the in the BIOS, but still it didn't work exactly as I expect. Yeah, I think uh, 3,933. I have no clue which memory set from g are they exactly running, Truthman? Do you have an idea using, about the specs? They are actually using the exact same one we had at the South Africa event. So the... 3466C16, 2 times 4 gigabyte kit. So those are the, the B die ones, I assume. Can I assume it? I, can't I, got no, I got no clue. I have to check. Maybe Andrew is on the chat as well. Andrew, maybe you can give us like a, a highlight of which ICs were under the hood of the G Skill memory kit that you guys used in, in South Africa. I'm just going to quickly have a look at the scores if I can find them on the HWBot site. And just check what was going on in South Africa. So that's the the first bad uh, bad bad thing that happened to Raspari. We lose some precious time. It was too cold. It was too cold, and is now only two to read. Is that a negative 121 at the moment? But the system is not wanting to uh, to start again. Mr. Breeze is struggling as well to get the system working. Yeah, and this is like typical of overclocking, of course. You can do like a lot of preparation and the moment when you think like, I have an hour, I have two hours, I want to get something done, then it doesn't work or it doesn't, it has its small hiccups and, and, and you really have to find a quick way of debugging what is going on. I think uh, Rasparty at the moment is like trying to push the memory way too hard at 4000 memory divider. I have no clue if that is even doable on, on these boards, maybe with Command Ray 2T or something that they can pull it off but I don't know if it's if it's really efficient enough to to gain them little milliseconds that that they need to have to snatch the ticket to go into the final that's gonna be uh, quite fun to watch but this that's the the trick uh, they're both back into their uh, into the bios but uh, mr. Briz is uh, Steadily going, uh, going for it. So 14.4 and 14.6. That's super close, and that, that's the thing with this quick benchmark because the score is not super high, so the score would be always tight, in a way. And and Andrew just confirmed there were e die underneath. So uh, I don't know e die 4000 megahertz on 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 the hero board if if it's like super rock stable to just straight up and boot and, and, and get some decent efficiency going with those those sticks. Maybe Rasparty can prove me wrong, but uh, I think maybe 3,733, 3,866 will be plenty just dialed in well and just focus on, on getting the CPU clocked as high as possible. Okay, he is in the comfortable position. He is in the lead. The other one has to figure out. And of course, this is the fun thing as well. These guys are so close to next to one another. They can... Let's they say almost look, look, look on the, settings, the other screen right? <laughs> and then see what, what's going on there. So this is Rasparat's screen. Uh, he's pushing that to 
5.5, 5.5 gigahertz for the CPU and maybe 5 gigahertz for the cache ratio. Is that 1.7 volt though? Uh, I remember that in Europe at the Asia Pilot World Series in Europe, the guys were pushing almost 2 volts on the CPU. That was mm -hmm. crazy. Indeed, but the advantage that those guys had indeed, they had like the deleted CPU, so they had like the thermal grizzly paste or the gelid extreme or whatever thermal paste they, they prefer underneath, so they could go full pot as well. These guys will probably be limited like minus 110, 120-ish max. And indeed with the stock Intel Tim between the, the die and, and the internal heat spreader. So they have no option than to just find the right balance between temperature, voltage and what the CPU can do, in fact, what the thermal paste can handle. And, and that's the thing that they have to figure out because Ross Party has did has done some from previous run on, on, on Skylake a little bit more cold and probably also well on a deleted CPU. So if he hasn't tried it on, let's say, a stock Intel CPU, so a non-deleted one, he might be wondering as well, what is going on here? My first runs were on the stock Intel, and I was like, oh, this scale's quite nice. I'm up to 5.5 Cinebench, 5.6, minus 100-ish, and then I went a little bit colder, and I lost like 300 megahertz, and it didn't work anymore. Till somebody, some young genius said, ah, you have to delete these CPUs, remove the thermal paste, redo it, and then it will be fine. And indeed it was. So we are we have some of the information that Rasparde is back into the OS. Trying again, 5.3 gigahertz this time, 5 gigahertz for the cache ratio. Still at 1.0, uh, 1.7 uh, volt for the vol for the core voltage. So we'll see how it can uh, push that. It's pushing the PLL, the PLL settings to 1.26. Maybe that will give him a little, you know, more stability and boost. And th this is what Skylake, in fact, is all about. It's like finding the right voltages determination voltage, DMI voltage, stuff like that. But of course, they don't go as cold. DMI voltage is really needed if you want to fight a cold bug or stuff like that. They can't go as cold. In fact, they're like almost running like on a cascade setup. So they could have like pre-tested this like maybe even at home, like just minus 100 H and just see how it clocks. But it's like we said, Truthman, there's like always the luck involved of, of Silicon Lottery. We have seen it in France where Bullshooter got like the 6.3 magic CPU that could do like 6.3 everything. And there was Dan Cup, the unlucky one, which only had a CPU which could do like 6,050 megahertz on two volts. Which like, <laughs> how on earth is this even <laughs> happening? But it happened. But it sometimes happens, you know, that's part of that's part of the game, uh, that's part of the sport, that's part of the game as well. But most importantly, is the, 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 the format is like, Anything can happen because if you don't take your precaution and making sure that you can, you know, go forward and and make sure that everything is set up correctly, you can end up in some you know, losing some precious time. Like you have to heat up, you have to maybe you hit a call bug on the CPU didn't new. Uh, they these these are like crushing you completely for this uh, for for this kind of match. So you have to be very careful on what uh, what you're doing. Yeah, and at the moment, I'm just waiting through some submissions from other competitors in, in GPU Pi. So uh, I talked about the batch size and reduction size, and apparently the magic combination for the 100 is 1M in batch size and 64 in reduction size. I haven't seen any of the competitors, in fact, move one of those values. So uh, maybe eh, a little parrot can swing it to their ears, because I've seen... Uh, 14 seconds, 186 by Orion24, which was like uh, competing last time in France. And he has done that at 5,700 megahertz. So maybe Ross Party can go close and do like a 14 second, 200 flat or something, if he can reach the 5,700 megahertz. We'll see what they can do, but the little parrots won't go to their ears to tell them that's part of the, you know, that's part of the game's that mm -hmm. uh, you know they can uh, they can do their the research this you know it's it's like all the tweakings we know the tweakings to 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 you know improve the system and and you know gain some a little bit more score but in these like 30 minutes matches sometimes you get stressed and you forget to do things and that's what actually uh, Rasprado was explaining us uh, uh, yesterday that this kind of match is you you easily forget to do something in these 30 minutes it's not like you have 4 hours Ah, we see him moving the values now. Did you just see that? 
So he's like trying to figure it out. And indeed, it's like you said, it's all about the preparation. We talked with Dan Kopp already. Ah, you had him on, on the live stream as well. We saw him what he did in France and where, like everybody was impressed with the guy. He's so, let's say, flexible and, 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 and all the, the benchmarks that you can throw at him. He, he knows like all the right settings and he's, he's just so well prepared. Same for Andrew, Dr. Wies, who won the South Africa event. Like just running with the guys, just preparing, just do like 30 minute laps and, and, and just compete with the guys which are now online of live, say, sorry, battling it out and just fire up your setup and go with the flow and just see what happens and, and that's indeed what you need to do you need to be aware of the time frame the time limit that you're having we're below six minutes now and the scores haven't moved a simple thing they're just trying to squeeze up finding those final megahertz 5500 ish now on the go will it work no it crashed it crashed okay they actually both crash at the same time. So they are fighting now to access the final of the HWBOT World Series. And this uh, HWBOT World Series here in North America is held at the LAN ETS. They will win one of the golden tickets to go to the final of the HWBOT World Championship to happen in December in Germany. This is quite interesting yeah. to see uh, that uh, these two overclockers are one is the second best overclocker in Canada, Raspardi. And Mr. Breeze is a complete outsider uh, against him. He was here last year, but is uh, quite new into this uh, uh, extreme overclocking scene. Yeah, but they're, they're all from the same team. And, and I really have to give credit to overclock.net. I don't know if, if some of you guys already now on Twitch have already like waded through their forums, but there is like so much information there about clocking different CPU types, memory types, GPUs, how to mod them, uh, find tweaks for OSs, benchmarks, stuff like that. It's like the Walhalla. I know Massman doesn't like to hear it, but there's like so much more information than we could ever fit like into HWBot at this moment. Everybody is sharing and, and caring. And, and even uh, if you're not a member of Overclock.net, you can even have access to to, to all the files and, and, and all the screenshots that they have available there. So indeed, Ross Party, like currently number two, I think, in Canada. And Mark, uh, Mark 0053 is, is actually the number one leader. <clears throat> indeed. So we are back on Mr. Breeze. Actually, Raspardi is struggling to boot his system, but there's less than four minutes, four minutes left in this semi-final of the HWBot World Series for the Extreme Overclockers. We are right now on the screen of Mr. Breeze. is benching and crashing. Oh, come on. So he just could, like, set the benchmark, just dial it in, and it went straight out. That's it. Yeah, it so up. So we, we have like about three minutes left in this game. So anything can happen at this moment because the score are quite close and they're both both struggling to, to get the system working. And um, they uh, are going to say that. they you know, If someone, if one of them managed to put a very good score, well, that that's going to be it. Because that's going to be super difficult for, for the other guys to you know, restart and, and, and push on the system. So Mr. Breeze is back into the BIOS. He's slowly improving, slowly improving the cash ratio from 51 to 53. But it's weird that he's doing that directly in the BIOS. He could have done that directly into Windows. Yeah, indeed, because like uh, the Turbo, the Turbo Light uh, software application like moved along very well on, on, on the Asus boards. Uh, maybe some of you guys still remember the I suite or how do I pronounce it in English was like with all those fan monitoring tools and, and all that stuff that of course overclockers don't need but could be very useful for daily users and we only used like the Turbo V from 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 that those days but we had to install like the entire package just to get like the Turbo V working and now with the, the light versions it's so flex and so easy to use indeed and you can even make profiles and, and this is one of the things as well which surprises me a little bit like if you have something working just save the profile and just load up Windows, load the profile and try to dial on from there. You gain like so much time. But indeed, it's like you said, Truth. Time pressure. You see what the competitor is doing. He's maybe like relaxed benching eh? because we saw Rasparty always being seated in his chair and that's like total dominant. Now, of course, he's working with a heat gun. But Mr. Breeze is like always standing up. So he's like 
my type of bench like i don't like to sit down maybe some people like to sit down some people bench with two hands some people bench with one hand we see all different styles going on and mr breeze is like trying to figure out i only have like one minute 30 left what else can i do to snatch the win so far this both of the other clickers are struggling to get into the the system uh, mr breeze just got it i just have to say they are struggling and then they get in the system and there's there's 55 seconds left in this first semi-final of the HWBOT World Series here in North America. We're watching Mr. Breeze that is trying to catch up on Ras Party and is lacking 200 milliseconds behind. Maybe he can run that. The benchmark is quite fast, so that maybe will be his chance to access the final. Yeah, and it's always like this. If the benchmark is launched, even in the final seconds, if it's launched before time is over, He's still allowed to do like the full run. So, if you like launch it like in, in one second to go, to go, it's still valid if it completes, of course. Sadly, his setup crashed, and there's 15 seconds left. We will queue into the judge for the official announcement Ten, of the time. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. So, Ras Party is now accessing the final of this HWBOT World Series 2016 here in North America. Uh, sadly, Mr. Breeze could not catch up with him, even though at some point there was a tight battle between them. Uh, first of all, we saw Ras Party taking the lead very early in the game, while we had uh, Mr. Breeze to um, catch up with him in the, uh, in the 10 in the minutes that were following that. And in the end, Ras Party, currently number two in Canada, accessed the uh, world, the final here. is will be competing against Mark0053 for uh, golden tickets to access the HWBOT World Championship in December. Yeah, and it's really fun to see like these these top contenders of, of, of each country. And, like in South Africa, we saw the same uh, with Vivi and, and, and Andrew battling out also number one and two. So in Canada, we'll have like a remake of, of the South African final. So the number one and number two, like uh, fighting it out for indeed to have that golden ticket to go to Berlin and, and fight like the winner of the European, the South Africa, Brazilian or the Latin America tour. And then finally, of course, the final ticket that we should see in, in Taiwan at Computex. That, that's it, uh, that's it, Ali Goft. This is actually extremely well done by Ras Party. Uh, this is extremely well done, especially because they didn't have the CPU before the competition. They, they just wanted to have it this morning. So one hour before, they, we gave them the CPU and the memory. So that's the two most important uh, components. Uh, of course, the motherboard is super important as well because you have to know all the, the, the settings in the BIOS. You have to know how they, it reacts when you, you, know, you do the overclocking and so on. But it's actually extremely impressive to see them like fighting at this level uh, using liquid nitrogen uh, on the on the two few components that they didn't knew just yesterday. And indeed, and I think that that also makes part of the fun for the overclockers as well. It can be very frustrating, of course, but that's all. It's always like included in overclocking. Like you, you, you like we said, you can do so much preparation once you go really cold and stuff like that. The memory doesn't play along. Your operating system has like some issue with with some software or some glitch, and indeed these guys only had like thirty minutes to figure it out. And and you have an idea about the 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 final CPU frequency that was party run at, truth me, like five thousand four hundred ish. Was that? Uh, it was um yeah yeah five dot four five five dot five was the uh, the final one he had. Well, guys. Um, uh, we will take a short break because then the next match will be the amateur. So for the next few matches, we will have the first semi-final for the amateur. So that will fight on uh, Asus motherboard, the Z170A, uh, Cisanic PSU 7, uh, P760 watt, uh, the Core i7-6700K, of course, uh, DDR4 memory uh, as well, because that's the Z170 uh, chipset. And, of course, everything of that will be streamed. So we'll have the first semi-final of the amateur, then we'll have the second final of the amateur, then we'll have the final of the amateurs, and by the end of the day, we will have the extreme 
final of the HWBOT World Series 2016. Here in North America, we will have Mark0053, currently number one in Canada, fighting against Raspardi that just qualified a few minutes ago into uh, to, to, for them to win the tickets for the HWBOT Championship Golden Ticket. Uh, thank you very much for being here. We will take a short break and find you back in the next few minutes. Thank you, Ligoft. Yep.